Hi everyone, as here from Heel vs. Babyface, it's the most wonderful time of the year. Well, it's E3, uh, we've already done Microsoft, previous video, go check it out. And uh, now it's time for Bethesda. And there's, there's one thing I've got to say about E3, alright, is that when the, um, the showcases are about to start, you can't help but being a little bit giddy. You know, what am I going to see? What's going to happen? Uh, what wonderful revelation may be in store for me? And you've kind of got this look on your face like, ha, 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 he, he. And then uh, some corporate guy comes out in jeans and a, and, a, and a shirt looking like, you know, somebody who would hold a mug saying, I'm the best dad in the world that was bought for him by uh, his secretary. And uh, they just come out and they're just like, games are such a wonderful experience. They take us to universes and planets beyond our imagination. And you just want to fucking punch them in the face. <clears throat> just no idea. No idea. Uh, that's E3. That is E3. So, uh, last night, like really late for me, UK time, uh, the Bethesda showcase happened. I watched it, but uh, I made notes. <laughs> but I decided I'd leave it until today, this morning. Sleep on it, you know. Uh, before I gave my thoughts and feelings. And that's why I've got the thumbnail the way it is. And that's why I've got the title the way it is. Because it, it, it's up to you. You. I'd like to see you in the comment section down below. What was it like to you? I'll tell you mine. Don't worry, I'm not going to hide it. I thought this was a, a mixed bag. The irony is, I thought there was some good stuff. Uh, and all the good stuff was from other companies and just published through Bethesda. And the Bethesda stuff was garbage. Was like garbage but there we go also before i start i'll go into this i gotta say this was probably the phoniest um of any of the showcases that we're gonna get this was clearly miked in in a way that they either put uh bethesda employees by microphones uh, so every time, like, Fallout 76 or something like that was mentioned, you know, an absolute piece of shite of a game, you'd go, whoop, 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 whoop. It's either Bethesda employees, you know, strategically scattered around the place, or influencers uh, who were uh, paid to do so. But it was clearly phony as hell. Not a natural reaction. Or whether or not the crowd had been told to do this or do that. This was not a natural reaction by any stretch. And it came across as pretty pathetic. Just saying. Pretty pathetic. When you're whoop whooping a mobile game that nobody's heard about. Nobody's heard about the franchise. Oh, it was a thing back in the early 90s. None of these millennials know what it's about. None of them. Even I. People of my generation. We don't know. Stop whoop whooping. Stop embarrassing yourself. Okay. God damn it. So let's get the bad stuff out of the way. So we can actually concentrate on the good stuff, yeah? Let's get the bad stuff, i.e. Let's get the Bethesda software stuff. Soft works stuff done. So they, they decided a great way to open up their showcase would be with their uh, egregious money pit uh, of a mobile game, Elder Scrolls Blades. I've played it. It's trash. It's absolute trash, people. Uh, it, it's just designed to milk money off you. Nothing more. Uh, we're adding more stuff. We're adding our dragons because we just do dragons. Uh, screw it. Screw it. Screw it really up its bum. If you, if you want to play Blades, knock yourself out. You want to spend money on it, you're a moron. Uh, and then, <laughs> that's it. That's all I've got to say about that. Uh, then we've got Fallout 76. Let the hilarity ensue. First of all, we had all the whoop, whoop, yeah. Fuck off. Oh, and then we had just the lies. Like, the amount of lying by Bethesda, Pete Hines and, and, and Todd Howe, it's just like... 
<sighs> really? So they said, first of all, thank you to the millions of people who bought Fallout 76. Probably sold two or three million. Probably. Uh, and then they said, thank you to the millions, plural, that's millions, plural, who have stuck with us. Piss off! You have not got millions of players playing Fallout 76. You have less than a million, no doubt. You have less than 500,000, no doubt. You probably have no more, no more than about 250,000. And I think I might be being generous there. Thank you to the millions who stuck around. Get, get out of here. Weirdo. Weirdo. So they talked about uh, a new patch. I couldn't, I couldn't care what it's called. I think it's called Wastelands or something. Uh, but let's get the first embarrassing thing out of the way first. Uh, they, were, uh, they announced that in this patch they're bringing NPCs into the game. And people were cheering. It was so sad. It's unreal. You have to cheer. You don't have to, but these people were clearly bought and paid for. Uh, and employees of, of Bethesda. But you have to cheer the fact that your broken, shitey, empty, vacuous, cash grab of a live service embarrassment, which has done untold damage to your company, is bringing NPCs in and you want people to fucking cheer... Oh my god, look, there's a dialogue window. Yeah! Meanwhile, back in the early 2000s, back in the 1990s, back in the 1980s. Jesuit H. Christ. Then they announce there's a free week of Fallout 76. Play it for free, people. <laughs> it's a precursor for the game going free to play. Play it for a week. See, see what you think of it. I tried it the other day, remember? I lasted 10 minutes, 48 seconds. But then, but then, just when you thought Fallout 76 couldn't get any more embarrassing, guess what they're bringing? If you had to guess on a, a single piece of content that your mind just says, oh no, oh no, 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 uh, that they would bring into it, guess what it could be? Uh-huh, uh-huh, Battle Royale mode. I think I'm beginning to hate Bethesda. I think I am. I think I'm just beginning to hate Bethesda. Seriously. It was the most desperate, is the only word I can say to describe it. The most desperate thing I've ever seen. Uh, those guys, you know, must be parched because they were thirsty as hell on stage. They were that desperate. And it's you're just like, yeah, yeah. This is your... This is your wonderful live service, your your uh, unique live service that separates itself from everything. Going to do a battle royale mode. <laughs> Piss. Unbelievable. Anyway, the people from the Elder Scrolls Online came on stage, and that got a good response, and rightly so. Um, Elder Scrolls is a game that has legitimately turned itself around uh, throughout the course of the years. It's been good for a long time. Uh, I've got nothing really to say about the game other than just buy it. Just buy it and play it. If you're wanting an, uh, an MMORPG to play, have some fun. Generally, get out into a world and explore it. Just go and get go and get the Elder Scrolls Online. It's good stuff. And they showed off um, a, a really nice cinematic that was way better than Game of Thrones Season 8, Episode 7. Uh, with a dragon wrecking a, a city. Uh, it was it was excellent. So yeah, just go buy it. That's all I've got to say. Elder Scrolls Online is a great game. Just go get it. Uh, then somebody came on. That's when we had the Commander Keen. Mo this is the Commander Keen mobile phone game that people are whooping again and pretending that they knew what on earth was going on. Nobody cared. It's a mobile game. It's going to be free to play and it's going to be microtransactions through the wazoo. Don't care. Moving on. Um, the Wolfenstein. Let's go on to some good stuff. Actually, after the let's go on to some good stuff. There was a. a I think the developer was called Tango. Uh, some Japanese people came on stage. They wanted to speak English. They really gave it a good go. I commend them for that. Uh, I was thinking at one point, maybe it should have been a better decision to uh, to bring out the, the initial guy with a translator. Uh, but then I thought, why? You know, he really tried well. And actually, he got his message across. Yes, 
he had to be very um, precise with what he was trying to say. Uh, but I was thinking to myself, no, I'm, I'm wrong here. I'm wrong. He's come out on stage. He's saying a foreign language, which he's clearly learning. I know what he's going on about. I know what he's saying. Let it be. Let it be. He's nothing wrong with that. And then they brought the, just the cutest Japanese girl out. Woman. She's a woman. And she was funny. And uh, again, she was trying to be very precise with her English. And it was it was wonderful. And it made me smile. And I thought, oh my God. Passionate people. Passionate about their work. They clearly weren't American. Um, <laughs> but it just felt a complete change. Apart from, and this was before the Elder Scrolls Online stuff came on. So you have like this real bullshitty stuff about uh, Blades and Fallout 76. And then you had these two Japanese people come on stage. And they, they really felt like you really kind of got that feeling. They, they loved what they were doing. And it, it was infectious. And I started to smile. And I was just like, you know. Because I was like po-faced for the first couple of bits. I was like, oh no, you got me, you got me. So they announced this game called Ghostwire. Now, yes... It didn't have any in-game footage. It had uh, a CGI uh, scene, but it looked really interesting. The premise looked really interesting. People in Tokyo literally vanishing, like vanishing out of their clothes. And it's a paranormal game. You seem to be some sort of paranormal hunter, and you have to find out what is going on. Uh, and maybe have the ability to see this supernatural entity or supernatural entities... Uh, which are going around seemingly touching people. They touch people and that's what makes them disappear. Uh, so the premise, the concept looked really exciting. And the CGI cutscene was sensational. It really, really was sensational. And um, so apparently it's going to be an action adventure game. And you're going to explore the city and stuff like that. Uh, I'd like to hear more about that in the future, but that got me that got me excited, and and it was kind of like, all right, now we've got Bethesda out of the way, and we've got you know people who are just public having games published through Bethesda. We're getting onto some nice stuff now. Uh, the Wolfenstein Young Blood team came out. Now I know people are going to go, oh look, it's two women, uh, the fighting Nazis. It's an SJW wet dream look i just saw a game which looked good that's what i saw i saw a game which looked like a lot of fun i didn't see that personally sure you can read that if you want to read it i think it's reaching i just think uh, they were trying different protagonists for a different adventure and i don't think there's anything wrong with that at all um so it just looked it looked good it looked fun you know i'm not saying it's gonna win any game of the years or anything but where I've seen a lot of games recently where I'm just like, eh, this one was kind of like, yeah, I, I, I might be interested in picking this up. And I think it's coming out quite soon. Yeah, July 26th. So it's only, um, you know, a month and a half away. So yeah, maybe, maybe. But it looked fun. It looked really good fun. Uh, then we had uh, another game called Deathloop. This fascinated me a lot. Uh, there's a male character, there's a female character, and they're locked in this battle where they, they literally kill each other. And then when the clock resets, they restart to back to where they were before. So whoever was killed is alive again, and they repeat the process. But they retain the memory by the look of it, while the person who killed the other person doesn't retain the memory. That's what it looked like. And so the way that they got killed firsthand, they would be able to dodge next because they knew it was coming the other person didn't and then they'll be able to to have an attack against them um looks interesting i i'm and there were i'm confused about certain elements of it but that's fine because i think the game itself might you know we'll obviously explain that as we go on it, it, they did say that there's multiple levels on it and the story will unravel as it goes along and you'll find out exactly how things are gonna turn out and i've got a feeling of course that I think got a feeling that it's going to ultimately end with you two fighting with each other for whatever might be the ultimate bad. Um, but I like the look of it. Um, I have to say this because I think it's only fair. Both the characters were black. And I think there's going to be some, again, wokeness talk. I, don't, I didn't see anything like that whatsoever. Uh, I just saw a game with two protagonists. And uh, I like the concept again. 
So if people want to try and read wokeness into it, I don't think whatsoever. What's wrong? What's wrong with having some black lead characters? If it fits the game, it fits the game. So what? Um, so I liked, I liked the look of it. I liked the look of it a lot. I'd like to know more about that game as well. Again, though, we didn't get any uh, in-game footage. Again, it was just uh, rend you know, CGI scenes. Uh, and so we are getting some interesting concepts, but we're not seeing them in practice. In practice, they might not work. Um, fingers crossed they do, of course, but con conceptually, they're looking, they're looking good. We then had um, a little chat about the, an Orion st streaming service that they're going to release. Look, I ain't got too much to say about this. I haven't said anything about um, uh, Stadia. Why? I ain't got a lot to say. You know, Stadia kind of looks like, uh, you know, uh, I don't know what it's bringing really to the table. Um, you know, I'm going to get it. I have pre-ordered it because I want to test it to see if it is the case. But, you know, it has these kind of grand ideas, but the games that are for it are like, meh. You know, games that most people are, we've all probably got. And if we want to play them, we'll just boot up our console or whatever so sure it might be decent from the go and i'll give that a crack when i'm being a little bit more mobile visiting friends or going out to various uh, places or whatnot but uh same thing with orion it's kind of like eh you know eh, okay streaming doom on your on your phone okay eh <laughs> we'll see and then uh, they ended with uh obviously they were going to end with doom eternal and doom eternal looks great it looks absolutely awesome. Um, the game itself just looked fun. Uh, looks fast. Looks frantic. It's on Mars, I think it is. And then uh, you had the battle mode, which is the competitive mode, which again looked like it could be a lot of fun for people. But it just looks like, you know, a great little game, a great little follow-up to, to the, the Doom game. Uh, what I do want to say before I end the video, though, is throughout the course of this presentation, they had the most obnoxiously manipulative vignettes scattered through where they try to do wokeness um oh i'm a member of the lgbt community and i find that it's great that i have people that represent me and i can see me and just like piss off just piss off with this stupidity no you don't you're your own person that's what defines you not fucking bethesda sticking a computer character going Aren't we progressive? Uh, so they were really kind of like manipulative, and uh, I found them pretty disgusting, to be honest with you. This is a this is a corporate idea of trying to identify with humans, and they've got no idea how to identify with humans. You know how you identify with humans? You be that Japanese couple that came on stage and just and just showed passion for the game. That's how you identify because their passion. Mirror, uh, f absorbs into you by osmosis maybe and then you start to smile because it's infectious because you 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 sense their passion you understand where they're coming from which makes you in turn more interested in what they've got to say and their product but these goddamn woke awful vignettes just corporate trying to trying to relate to humans when they're not human why because they just want your cash that's all they want they don't care if you're gay they don't care if you're black they don't care if you're handicapped. They don't give a toss. They just want your money. Normal pound, pink pound, they don't care. They just want your cash. So less of these vignettes, please. They are pathetic. Uh, so mixed bag. Uh, the, the, again, the studios that publish through Bethesda, they look like they've got some decent stuff. The Bethesda stuff. And this doesn't include Elder Scrolls Online because that's Zenimax Online Studios anyway. So again, it's it's a part of the Bethesda, you know, the Zenimax major company, but the Bethesda stuff itself, the Blades and the Fallout 76, desperate, just desperate stuff there. And uh, Todd coming on and, and attempting an apology to start with, oh, oh, and he just knew he didn't care, but there you go. Uh, so let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I hope you enjoyed the vid. If you did, do get a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel. Follow my social media and Twitch for my streaming links in the description. But down below, I'll be always watching. Mario, you take care. Bye for now.